Again, like I said in my haul video, why don't more puzzle brands provide this? Hey guys. Now you know I have tons of Disney puzzles, but I've kind of been on like a new puzzle brand binge. Well, I mean, new to me. So I've been thinking, it's been a while since I've actually done a Disney puzzle, but I feel like it's finally time to go back to one. I'm feeling very much in the Disney spirit. And I know I've said this before, but hit that like button if you're a fan of Disney. So today, we are going to be doing a puzzle from the company, Dowdle. Did I say that right? Anyways, this one is from Disney's Beauty and the Beast, and it is called Finding Love. It is 500 pieces, and it is 16 by 20 inches when it's completed. Now, this comes in a great-looking box, and it has quite a bit of information. The back of the box has some artist notes, basically kind of describing what's going on in this image. And what I found very interesting about this brand is on the side of the box, it does mention that this set includes a full-size reference reference image. That's a big plus. And on top of that, a resealable bag for puzzle pieces. Again, like I said in my haul video, why don't more puzzle brands provide this? It's like cereal. Why don't they come in resealable bags? Ugh, I'm drifting off topic here. Let's get back to this. This brand also provides a no missing piece guarantee, which is also a fantastic thing to offer. Just from those things alone, I really like this brand so far, and I haven't even opened it. These puzzle brands really need to realize that little things like that really do make a difference. But anyways, first impressions looking at this set. Now, this image is really fun. I love the colors. It's very bright. The scenery is spectacular. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite Disney cartoon, and the castle also happens to be my favorite. That's definitely a castle I would love to live in. But you know, if, if, if I'm not royalty, you know, I don't mind living in the town in the background. The town depicted in the movie is absolutely gorgeous. I can't take Belle's house in the back there. That's not my house. I'm probably her next door neighbor right there, which is fine with me. It's a great house. We got quite a bit going on in the front bottom area of this image. We have your typical scene of Belle and Beast, you know, kind of building that friendship, forming that bond. But I couldn't help but notice several things going on in this image. We just so happen to have the enchanted rose sat in the middle of the dirt. Wasn't that actually supposed to be in the West Wing or something? And then we have all the other friends hanging around like Mrs. Potts, Chip on a pile of books. And then quite randomly, you just happen to have LeFou sat in the background posing as a snowman kind of very creepily staring at Belle and Beast. I, I don't know what he's trying to do here. But then you have Gaston standing right above there, kind of flexing his pipes. He's not mad at all at what's going on in this image. There's no jealousy. There's no feuding. He looks pretty proud of himself here. He looks pretty darn happy to be posing there in front of everybody. And then you have Maurice stood on the right side of the image. I kind of think he's looking at Gaston and kind of cheering him on. This is very strange. Almost kind of random. We got a number of random things going on here. But overall, what I'm sensing with all these characters is there is a lot of positive vibes going on here. As random as it is, no one's mad at each other. There's no feuding. There's no torches and pitchforks. It's all about just having a good time in this image, which is cool. I don't mind that. I think this is a very fun image to look at, to be honest. But aside from that, in terms of completion process, I'm going to be honest, I'm not really sure how difficult this is going to be. The images here are pretty straightforward. I, I feel like I can kind of sort this out in a way where I can sort a tray for the castle, one for the trees, the sky, the characters, kind of like my typical sorting that I tend to do usually. I almost feel like areas of the snow and the sky are going to be the most difficult part, I think. This is only 500 pieces and the box doesn't actually show you the actual size of the puzzle piece. So this will be interesting. But I mean, hey, I could do this really fast or this can take me a century to do. I don't know. We'll see, right? This isn't like a typical Thomas Kincaid image where, you know, it looks like a painting and 
kind of the details are a bit blurred within the puzzle piece. This to me looks almost like the detail is, how can I say, exact. Pretty much like it's easy to tell where the piece belongs. But I'm sure either way, it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's just get down to business here. Let's open this up and let's see what these pieces are like. All right, let's open this up. Now this is kind of like a slip cover to it, so this is quite interesting. Ooh, I like that. That looks really cool. How do we open this here? Oh my God, it's Velcroed. What? So the puzzle pieces themselves come in a regular bag like they always do, but look at this, guys underneath it has the resealable bag and that oh oh my gosh i can already tell that this is going to be big oh my goodness what i have to bring the camera up so that you can kind of see how much space this poster takes up this is fantastic Look how big this is. I can hang this up on my wall and be like, yeah, I bought that poster at Disney. This is going to be super helpful when completing the puzzle. I mean, I have to stop for a second here. Just look at this box. This is quality. This is amazing. Not only is the box itself resealable with a Velcro and it's solid, they give you a resealable bag as well. This company's fantastic. I, I haven't even started the puzzle and I already love it. This is great. All right, let's move on to the actual pieces here. So let's open this up and see. So far, I can already make note here. Look at the bag, guys. There is quite a bit of puzzle dust in here. Let's open this up and try not to make a huge mess with this dust. Ooh, look at that dust in there. Let's see how much I actually got on my table. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't be surprised, right? But, wow, look how big these pieces are. And this is a pretty hard piece as well. Pretty darn solid. This is unlike what I've experienced with the other puzzle brands. This feels like, I don't know. What do you call this? It has a blue back to this. Like, I'm no puzzle expert. Um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of material you would call this. The box didn't mention what it was, but if you know, please let me know down below because, um, yeah, this is, this is new to me. I'm glad I've gotten into the habit of trying new brands instead of sticking with the same things all the time, but look at these pieces. Oh, wow. And look, you got some funny shapes in here too. Not just your typical puzzle pieces, but it looks like we got some fun ones as well. The image print is very vibrant. You can see the detail very clearly. Like, I don't know, now that I've opened it, I feel like this is not gonna take me too long. I feel like this isn't gonna be very difficult. This seems pretty straightforward. We got some big pieces. We have great prints on this. They're sturdy. I'm gonna be interested to see how they fit together, how they snap in and how well they stay together. So we'll see, right? Oh, talk about creepy, huh? It does have quite a bit of glare, but considering the size of these pieces and the way the print is very vibrant in color and the detail is pretty straightforward, I don't really see glare being a major issue here. Look at that piece. I'm really loving the different shapes. This is fun. This is, this is gonna be a whole new world. Wait, that's the wrong movie, isn't it? Anyways, guys, I'm really interested in what this experience is gonna be like, so let's get started. Okay, so here's how I went about sorting my eight puzzle trays. I had one, of course, for the edges, one for the sky pieces, one for characters, one with snow pieces, one for the castle and the village, one for like the rocky areas, one with tree pieces, and the last one was pieces that were kind of random where I couldn't figure out where to put them. Now there are two reasons why sorting this particular set was quite a challenge for me. For one, I had never worked with such wild shapes in my life. 
And sometimes it would get confusing as to whether a piece was an actual edge piece or not because some of these shapes had a very slight sloped edge and it almost looked like it belonged on the border of the puzzle. So I spent a lot of time really trying to study the piece and seeing whether it was a straight edge or not. On a side note, what is the significance of chickens in Beauty and the Beast? I had just noticed it when I was looking at the poster and I was just confused by that. Anyways, as for the second reason why the sorting was a challenge, well, for some bizarre reason, I thought it was a good idea to stay up later than I should on a Friday night after a long day at work. And I was pretty tired, pretty much to a point where I was seeing double and the lighting was terrible in my room, so that didn't help. But I kept persisting and kept getting more frustrated. So please don't bother sorting when you're half asleep. Next day, I realized I did a poor job with my sorting because when I tried to start on the edges of the puzzle, I realized my tray was missing a lot of pieces. So don't do that. But I made sure I was fully awake for my next couple of puzzling sessions. Now one of the issues that I came across, and I found this mainly when I was sorting my pieces, was that a lot of the pieces were not punched all the way through. I would come across two or three pieces that were still stuck together. Thankfully they weren't too stuck together, so I was able to just slightly give it a delicate pull and they easily came apart. So it was fine in the end, but I found that interesting. I always try to make it a habit of pulling the pieces apart if I find them that way and throw them back into the pile. I don't know, I guess I feel like if I don't, then I'm cheating. But no judgment if you do that, that's just me. Now this set did give me some glare issues, but I just made sure that the light wasn't directly above the puzzle and it was fine in the end. Really, what made up for it was the size of the puzzle piece and the solid bright image prints. Now I know I showed you earlier during the unboxing that there was quite a bit of puzzle dust inside the bag. And it did leave some big pieces of dust on my table, but most of it really stayed in the bag. So it wasn't a huge issue in the end. A quick brushing off with my hand did the trick. One of the things I really loved about this puzzle brand was how the pieces snapped really well together. The fit was great. I never had an issue like I did with the Seiko puzzles where the pieces would just kind of pop up as you were trying to put it together. Everything just fit together so smoothly. Another thing that I really liked about this brand was that not only did it contain the traditional puzzle shapes, but there were some crazy ones in here. And I feel like it really threw a different challenge at me. It gave this puzzle like a little spunk. It was different. There were times where I felt like this puzzle was like, oh, this is too easy. But then the different shapes would throw me off and kind of make it like, oh, that's interesting. That's where that belongs. It was an easy puzzle overall, but then again, it wasn't, if that makes any sense. Because it threw something different at me with the funny shapes. It was fun. This puzzle took me about four hours to complete. And really, most of that time was spent just sorting the puzzle whilst half asleep. I highly suggest you pick up a puzzle from Dowdle. And if you love Disney, pick up one of their Disney puzzles. The sets come in a super fancy looking box. You get an awesome sized poster and of course the resealable bag. The image print on the pieces are amazing. They're bright, they're solid, was clear. I found the piece size for my 500 piece set a great size. The pieces snap in very smoothly. The fit is great. And I checked out their website and they have tons of beautiful images. The artwork is amazing. I'm going to leave a link down below so you can check out their website. Let me know down below if you're a fan of Dowdle Puzzles. And if so, what sets have you tried? And your overall thoughts on the brand? I am for sure going to be picking up more sets from Dowdle. Especially a bigger one. I need a bigger one. I did hear they do carry the largest puzzle in the world at 60,000 pieces. But where in the world would I put that? Oh well. Now it's time for me to go pay a visit to Belle's house and see if she's ready to have coffee yet. Wow, I had a lot of good things to say about this one. 
I must say I really can't wait to do more from this brand. If you want to catch me reviewing other puzzle sets in the future, be sure to subscribe so that you could follow along with me on my jigsaw journey. Pick up a few puzzle tips here and there and see what else I get up to with puzzles. Well guys, I hope you are all doing well. Thanks for sticking around and I will see you in the next one.